Today I'm going to show you a practical application of a rippling plane effect in Cinema 4D that I used in a project for this Via Hemp commercial that I made. So I'm going to show you how I created the effect and how that influenced our design of this scene. Starting in Cinema 4D, I have a blank, empty scene right here. Now, I have my default settings, but if you're doing a ripple effect, I highly recommend going beyond the default number of frames. I set mine to 240 frames, and then I set my frame rate to 24 frames per second. To start the ripple effect, you need to go up and create a plane. Super simple. Now, while I was making this effect, we have to strike a fine balance between how many polygons we have on our plane so we can get enough resolution to create the ripple, but not so much so that we get these weird artifacts. So the first thing we have to do is we have to create a plane effector. We can just go right here, add a plane, drop it under the plane right there. And then with this plane, we can go into the deformer tab of the plane effector and hit points. So now it's going to move the plane some arbitrary amount. We can click on the plane, go to the effector, parameter, and in here it's setting it on the Y, so it's moving these points back and forth based on the Y axis, but we just need to find the, the correct axis. We want it to go up or down, doesn't matter, depends on your design. Let's say the Z, I think that would be 100. Yes, eh, that's uh, too much, but this is the direction I want it to go. So let's just try 10. Now, I'm going to go back to my plane, as in the plane object, not the plane effector. And I'm going to set the segments to, let's say, 40 and 40. That should be enough to get me started. So now what I need to do is I need to create a field to create the effect of the ripple, but I need a specific shape. Fortunately, it needs to be a torus, which is easy to find. We can just find torus field right there. And now we have this torus field under our plain, plain torus field. And if we hit T in our keyboard, we can just scale it up. And now we're getting a cool effect of the ripple. Let's animate this. So we're going to go to frame zero. I'm a monster and a crazy person, and I like using automatic keyframing because I'm lazy. So go to the torus field, go to the radius, make a keyframe, set it to zero. Once that's zero, we can go forward, let's say 48 frames, sure. Let's take this to, let's say 500. And the reason why 500 is because the plane is currently about 400. Maybe this is a little bit too big, so we can just scrunch it down just to the very edge of the width and height of our plane object. So now if we play that back, Sweet. We got a cool ripple effect, but now we're going to repeat it and we're not going to do crazy sequences of torus fields. We're going to add some procedural stuff because motion designers love proceduralism, as in we could adjust things on the fly. If you go into your modifier fields layers right here, we have a couple effects that we need. We're first going to add a delay effector. And basically what that's going to do is create our ripple effect with just one option. So we can hit the spring option right here. And if we go back to frame zero and we play that back by hitting the space bar, we're getting a nice little wobble effect. We can even crank up the effect strength just like this. And we're getting a more intense effect. It actually didn't come through as much as I wanted to, but you get the idea. So now what I want to do is I want to go back into that plane effector and I'm going to add one more thing and I'm going to set a decay. And that just helps blend some of the animation together. So then when we play it back, it's going to look a little bit smoother sort of thing. And we can really crank up this effect now by going to the plane effector and just go to the parameter and let's say, crank up that Z value, just like this, just like that. Sweet. So this is pretty much how I made the effect. And now for you, what you would need to do is go in and figure out the settings that you want. You can change the thickness of your torus. So if we were to play that back now, 
just like that. It's gonna be a little bit more intense. And really, these values are purely up to you. So we have our animation of our ripple effect, but now I wanna show you how I added the text onto the plain background so then we could get the cool ripple on the type. And this time we're not doing it procedurally, we're putting it directly on the plane with a material. So I'm gonna hit the material button, we're gonna go in and create a new standard material, and we'll call this ripple plane. Sweet, drop that on. Let's go in and change the color to maybe some like nice orangey thing like that. Really crank up the roughness to a really intense amount. And then we're just gonna add an HDRI light into our scene. Now I'm gonna go and just find something in the asset browser. So I'll type in HDRI, go to my dome light, find any HDRI that I like. Sure, let's try this one right here. That could look pretty cool. Just click and drag that onto the texture there. We will turn off the asset browser and let's make a camera. So I'm gonna take this camera right here by making a redshift camera, go into the coordinates, set the X to zero, the Z to zero, and then set the rotation to zero, zero. And then I'm going to position my rotation so that I'm looking directly down negative 90 on that plane object. And if we leave the camera right here, we can see that we have a camera looking straight down on our ripple object. So when we play that back through our camera, we get that cool effect. So to get the type onto the plane, I will use an alpha mat or some sort of way to create a blending of two materials. So I'm just gonna go in and use the same material that I used for the main project. We're jumping over into Illustrator for a second because this is how I made the mask. You can use Photoshop, you can use After Effects. Basically you need something to create a mask onto our plane object and it has to be a square. I mean, if you wanna get really technical, it has to be the exact same size as your plane. So if we jump back into Cinema 4D and we leave our camera, this plane is a square. And if we hit C on our keyboard on our plane object and we hold shift on this UVW tag right here, we can see that we have a UV of a perfect square. So anything that we put under this square will need to fit in this frame. That's why we use Adobe Illustrator to create the mask. We can create an image exactly as we need it to be. So we're gonna go in to the file that I saved for the mask, and I'm gonna go into the material right here. Make this a little bit bigger, and I have my mask right here. I will drag this into my Redshift material, and now I can't plug it directly into the RS standard base color because what will happen is it'll just take up the entire frame. We want it to only affect wherever the white is. So we're gonna hit C in our keyboard and we'll type blend and we'll add a material blender like that. And then we're gonna plug the out color of this main material into the base color and then put this on the surface and then in layer one, we're gonna plug the blend color into the mask, just like that. And we're gonna take our standard material, hold control to duplicate that, and we'll set this into the material color, just like that. So now, unfortunately, because these two redshift standard materials are the same thing, we're not getting that same mask effect, but we can just go in, change this to like white, and then we can see now that nothing in our viewport is showing because it is, material blenders are a little weird, unfortunately, but we can go in to our main camera right here and we can turn on our Redshift render view, bring that up. I'm not gonna dock that right now. Let's just turn on the play button. And we have our guava berry type right there. Obviously, it's a little dark. We can go ahead and light the scene. I'm gonna do that really quick. 2,000 years later. So after taking a second, the scene is much brighter, and if I were to go into my Redshift render view, kick that off, we obviously have the type in the scene, and then if we were to 
turn off our Redshift Render View for a second, start the playback, pause it, then play our Redshift Render View. Hey, look, there's the type, and we're seeing a little bit of distortion right there, but this is why we add a subdivision surface to our plane to really clean up these gross edges. So now, when we do that, it's gonna really fix that ripple effect. So if we play it back, we're getting a little bit more of a distortion on that plane object. So if you look at the main shot that I ended up finishing, it's pretty much the same effect, and from here, you would animate your camera, set up more lights, add a different subject into your scene, or do whatever else to create a cool looking ripple effect for your scene. But I hope you learned something in this Cinema 4D tutorial because I know I mostly do Unreal stuff, but hey, I like all the fun stuff. And I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, that thing is also down there for that as well. And I will leave you with the final tip, and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you will make some gains. Brr. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.